Writing Workshop. Welcome to our Monday, September 19th virtual day. I do hope that uh, your other virtual classes are going well today. I know a number of you will be closing out the day with me just because I know uh, Writing Workshop comes pretty late in your schedules. As I mentioned on Friday, today is all about grammar, just continuing to work on basic usage and punctuation errors like we've been practicing. One thing I like to do on virtual days is give you a chance to pause the video, say a quick prayer, uh, just in case you haven't uh, said a prayer in a little bit today. Just spend some time thanking God for uh, the beautiful day, as well as um, just helping your mind and your heart to focus on the work that uh, we still have to do. All right, and I hope you had a moment just to pause the video and pray. Um, just walking through the rest of our agenda real briefly here. For one, it does say please watch through the ACT English Strategies video below this agenda. It's actually what you're watching right now. But I will tell you um, that in just a moment here, I'm actually going to splice in the same video from an earlier year. That's why you'll see my shirt change. Uh, my voice might sound a little bit different as I splice that in. Um, I have run this exact lesson before virtually, and it's worked well before. So I'm just going to splice that in. It's also going to lead you through the grammar quiz that you see at the bottom of our lesson folder. I do highly encourage you to watch through this entire video because I do give a little glance at that quiz towards the end of it. One thing real quick, I've got some grading and, and planning still to do for our class, so I will be available in Microsoft Teams this afternoon if you need assistance with anything with this quiz or this with this lesson. Um, specifically this afternoon, I'm also going to be working on uh, commenting on more outlines from your uh, college application essay. So if you're still working on getting some fi finishing touches on your outline, you've got some time to do so. Just know that I uh, plan to have feedback on outlines ready to go for class time tomorrow. Please note that um, I am setting a uh, 4 p.m. Um, deadline on the grammar quiz that you see. It's not a long quiz at all, and you do get two attempts on it, so take your time as you work on it. Once again, keep an eye out for outline feedback. I'm still working on quite a bit of it. Um, but I do plan to have that ready to go for you tomorrow. We pop back out to this lesson folder. You'll see ACT English Strategies. That's a video you're watching now. First grammar quiz is the one that you'll walk through. Once again, I do have some uh, just directions on what to do within that quiz in the video that I'm about to splice in. All I gotta say is peace. ACT English Strategies here. As you note, um, this is just a video giving you some pointers about the ACT English section. I'll also give a brief overview of our quiz. I do want to take a look at this little document I typed up for you. It's not an exhaustive list of pointers for the ACT English test, but these are the most important ones that come to mind for me. These are things that I like to try to build into any sort of quizzes I give you. I would note these are specific strategies for the English test. So maybe while some of these might be applicable for other ACT uh, subtests, I'm specifically talking about the English section, not even the reading section. First pointer, start with your strengths. Um, the ACT English test is 75 questions in 45 minutes. So that's faster than one question per minute. The nice thing there is that most questions are grammar questions. You don't even have to necessarily read the entire passage. It's generally best to read questions before their passages and then start with the questions you're most confident about. So if you notice that um, one of the questions just underlines a couple of words that are a, that should be a proper noun and should all be capitalized and you notice they're not all capitalized in the passage, that can be a quick one that you can fix automatically. Spend five seconds on it instead of a full minute on that question. Every passage in the ACT English test also get, will give you some whole paragraph or whole passage questions. Generally, I like to save those for the end of the passage or even the end of the test if they're particularly difficult. What that allows you to do is answer as many questions as possible. You won't run out of, of time on the entire test. Um, and it'll allow you to tackle all the easier questions first and save some of those harder questions for the end. We have to remember that a question is a question is a question. Even though a whole passage question might be infinitely harder than that capitalization question, they're worth the same in the end. Another strategy, process of elimination, as you know. Um, so as you're answering individual questions, it's probably helpful to visually rule out the answers you know are incorrect. There are a couple of strategies that you should know about for the ACT English test uh, specifically. 
One is that no change is a viable option. So, and we have to remember that uh, just because they underline something inside of a passage on the ACT English test does not necessarily mean it's wrong. It is possible for an underlined portion to be correct as is. That would also mean for a process of elimination, if it's clearly, if there's something clearly wrong with the underlined portion, you can rule out no change in that context. If one of your answer options corrects an error, let's say it's a comma question, right? And we notice that one of the options, we'll say option B corrects that comma error, but makes a different error, maybe it capitalizes something that shouldn't be capitalized, that option is automatically wrong. So pay close attention to that. Uh, if you notice that one of the options makes a different error while it fixes one, it's automatically wrong um, because they're asking you for grammatical correctness all the way through. Another little uh, bit of logic there, if two answer options have the exact same meaning, um, they either have to both be automatically wrong or one of your options has to be all of the above. This is actually easiest to think about in math. Let's say you have a math problem and your options are A, which is just the number 1, B is 2, C is 4 over 2, 4 divided by 2, and D is 3. If you notice, B and C are 2 and 4 over 2. Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, meaning that both B and C mean the same thing. You're only allowed to select one option, which means that you cannot select B or C. They mean the same exact thing. You can automatically rule them out. Your answers have to be either 1 or 3. That helps with the process of solving that math problem. It would be the same thing in English. If you notice that you've got two answers that mean the exact same thing, again, they're either both automatically wrong, or you've got like a D, all of the above, or a B and C are both correct kind of option to pay attention to. There's also some language things inside of the directions for the ACT English test that you should be aware of. One, uh, one phrase that you will see in the directions for the ACT English test is best expresses the idea. Um, oftentimes on the ACT English passage, you'll see a larger portion of text underlined could be a sentence, could be a larger clause, could be an entire paragraph. The test is likely asking you to choose the option with the best wording or phrasing. The ACT English test always, all caps always, wants you to choose the most clear and concise option. Whatever uses the fewest words and retains its meaning is the correct answer. You won't see any of those on today's quiz, but as we move forward, keep uh, pay attention for conciseness. Another bit of language, appropriate for standard written English, is inside of the directions for ACT English. The test also always wants you to choose answer options that avoid slang. I haven't seen a whole lot of that on the official ACT, but just know that. They also want you to keep tone formal and academic. So if, the, if there's a passage that ever uses slang terms, the passage will likely place them in quotation marks. Uh, just keep an eye out for that. If you ever have uh, answer options that include slang terms, or they just kind of keep the tone too informal or not academic at all, that answer can be ruled out as well. Let's maybe take a look at a couple of these questions inside of your quiz. I'll close this. Let's go back to the lesson. So notice there are some directions for you right here. Uh, they are bas just basic grammar rules like we talked about. Each question will present an underlined portion of text. I have not given you full passages here. You must select the multiple choice option that best phrases it in standard written English, like we talked about. Again, no change is a viable option, so pay close attention to that as you, as you quiz. Notice there is a timer, 20 minutes for 15 questions. That's much more generous than the normal ACT English is, but we'll kind of uh, work our way into a healthier time frame there. Notice that we're given a sentence with an underlined portion Running out of ideas for savage YouTube comments, the boy stuck with a classic, you're stupid. And notice that they have you're stupid underlined right there. I do want to show you a couple of tools that you can use for selecting your answer. One is the eliminate choices button. This allows you to do process of elimination inside of Schoology. Let's say I know that D is wrong because it misspells stupid, right? That allows me to rule it out. Let's say I also know that C is incorrect. I notice that there's no end mark in that sentence. There's a period in the normal sentence. There's no end mark in C. Now I know that I have to choose between either A, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, or B, Y-O-U-R. I have to decide which spelling of your is correct there. 
Another tool I want you to know about is the flag for review button right here. Let's say I have no idea how to deal with uh, with this sentence. There's a comma after confidence. They give me different options for punctuating. Let's say I'm not sure. What I can do is click flag for review. I can even take a guess and click flag for review. That works. And once I get to the end of my quiz, if I hit review, it'll show me which questions are flagged that I can go back to to make sure that I can double check them. That's good for questions that you want to skip and save for the end. It's also just good for questions in general that you're not sure about and you want to take a guess and just take a look back at your guess before you uh, submit at the end. Use those ACT strategies that we discussed earlier in the video as you take your quiz. Notice once again, you've got a 20 minute timer, so um, you can't spend infinite amounts of time on each individual question. We will work our way into being able to answer more than one question per minute as the semester goes on.